Hey guys, it's Chris here. I want to talk to you about dry camping and boondocking and give you over 20 tips of things that we do, practical things that will help you when you dry camp or when you're out boondocking. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is dry camping? Dry camping is essentially camping without hookups. Um, boondocking is the same exact concept except with boondocking we tend to think of it as being out in the middle of nowhere in a beautiful place, a desert, a beach, the forest, and so you could be virtually anywhere and you're self-contained. And so that's the idea of dry camping is that you have everything you need. You have your power, you have your water, you have your sewer, you have your food, you have everything you could possibly need so you're not relying upon hookups. Let's talk about where you can dry camp. A lot of times you'll actually dry camp where you'll be paying for camping in a place like a national park. You might be a member of Harvest Hosts as we are um, you might be camping in your friend's driveway or your family member's driveway. And you might be dry camping at our favorite place, which is Walmart. So why would you want to dry camp? Usually you're dry camping in the most beautiful places you can possibly be. For instance, right now we're in the National Forest at Finger Lakes, and we are in the middle of fall colors. It's absolutely spectacular. And we're paying $7.50 a night to sit here on this piece of earth surrounded by total peace. We've dry camped in the Grand Canyon, in Glacier National Park. We've dry camped throughout beaches on Baja, Mexico. We have had amazing experiences dry camping where we paid to actually be in places where we were totally surrounded by beauty. And that's usually the number one reason why you're gonna to wanna to dry camp. Another big important reason to dry camp, of course, is to save money. A lot of times you're not actually paying to camp where you're gonna stay. So for instance, with your Harvest Host membership, you're paying annually for that, so when you go to stay each night, you're staying basically for free on someone else's property. Or you're staying at your friend or your family member's property, or you're camping out in BLM land on the west coast, or in national forest, or you're just getting out and away from things, and you're camping for free. So that's another great reason to be totally equipped to dry camp. We love dry camping, and we're gonna share with you some of the tips and tricks that we've used over the years to have a great experience no matter where we are. So the first tip and most important thing about dry camping is actually counterintuitive to the name itself, and that is making sure that you have water. You wanna have as much water as you possibly can for as long as you possibly think you'll be out there and some. So make sure that your holding tank is full. If you have jerry cans, make sure that you fill those up. Even your water bottles. If you have a chance to fill up water bottles that you use daily, just go ahead and fill up everything because you wanna have as much water as you possibly can. The second tip is to do the opposite of that, and that is to make sure your tanks are completely empty. Empty your gray tank and your black tank at a dump station. Do that at the very last minute if you can. So when we're boondocking we always, or dry camping, we always like to find a dump station either the night before we're gonna go out and, and dry camp, or on our way actually driving out, we'll look for a dump station so that we can make sure our tanks are completely empty. The third thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your propane is topped off. We rely heavily on propane for all of our appliances, so we make sure that we always have at least one tank full. When we're boondocking, because we have two separate tanks, we make sure that we have both tanks completely full. That way we're starting off our trip with the ability to run everything that we need to cook. If we need to run a heater, if it's cold, we've got the propane for our heater. We're able to run our refrigerator and our stove and our oven um, and our hot water heater if, if we were to need it. So making sure you have your propane topped off is important as well. The last thing, and probably my favorite, is to stock up on food. We usually make that one of our trips as well when we know that we're gonna be dry, dry camping for a while. We'll stop and we'll load up on groceries, we'll make sure we have everything that we need, plus all the things we really, really enjoy. Um, if you can pre-make your food, it also helps because once you are dry camping, we'll talk about this, but you won't have all the energy and all the water that you would for washing dishes and cooking and preparing things. So if you can cook a couple meals in advance, that's a bonus tip as well uh, to get you started on your dry camping. Let's talk about the next tip, which is really all about conserving the things that you have. The first is that you're gonna to wanna to conserve your water. How can you conserve your water? There's a variety of different ways. One is just simply to use as little of it as you absolutely need. So if you're washing dishes, which you may need to do or you will need to do, use as little water out of the sink as possible. Another thing that you can do is you can actually capture the water using a small plastic container so that you're not putting that water into your gray tank. That's important because you wanna keep your, as much space in your gray tank as possible. 
when you get done washing, if you're using biodegradable soap, which we recommend, you're able to then go outside and pour the water in a responsible place where, the, where you're not putting it into your gray tank and you're not taking up space. Obviously, never do that with your black tank. Never dump either your gray tank or your black tank when you're, when you're dry camping or boondocking, no matter where you are. You also are probably going to skip a shower or two or three or five when you're dry camping. So you can use the wet wipes if you really want to wipe yourself down and have that clean feeling, or you can go without a shower, or you can set up a solar shower, which is something that we'll talk about as being a cool little thing that you can have. We actually have a outdoor shower with our RV, so we can use water from our holding tank, but it'll go outside so that the water again is not going into our gray tank. It's just dripping down into the ground. If you don't have a solar shower, you don't want to invest in an outdoor shower, you can use something as simple as a one gallon jug and that way you know exactly how much water you're using as you rinse down. Sounds basic, but it can go a long way for you if you're trying to conserve the water. The next tip for conservation is conserving your power. When you're not plugged into shore power, you are limited to the size of your batteries and your ability to restore energy into those batteries. So you wanna make sure that you're reducing the amount of draw on the batteries, as well as having a way to stock them up or refill them, which is usually in the form of solar, or a generator. You can also, of course, run your vehicle if you need to recharge the batteries as well. But the idea of conserving power is just as important as conserving water. So what are some other tricks to conserve power? Of course, turn off the things that you aren't using. Turn off the lights if you don't need them. Uh, turn off any fans if you don't need them. On the contrary, you can use headlamps. We always have a headlamp and some small flashlights around. You also can have little mini USB fans, which we absolutely love. You can charge them, they're, they're low energy. You can charge them and you can use those to, to carry with you if you need to fan down. You can also take advantage of the shade and spend as much time as you can outside. If you have an awning, it's great because you can pull out the awning and sit underneath there. If there's a breeze, you get the cool breeze. But that way you're not sitting inside running your fan or, or running your air condition if, if you're used to running your air condition. Another thing you're gonna wanna do is be very responsible with your waste and minimize it as much as possible, especially when you're camping in a national park or somewhere outdoors where you're away from the ability to throw things away. You definitely want to make sure that you're using as little as possible and keeping track of it all. So you can use a paper plate more than once if you want to use paper plates, or you can use your plastic wear and just be prepared to wash it. Try to keep up with everything. Empty your trash on the way in and empty your trash on the way out. So you're not leaving any trash behind, you're not burning the trash in a fire, you're not burying it, you're not just uh, leaving it behind you. That's an important thing because you're sure to camp in places where you see that people aren't picking up after themselves. And that's definitely something you don't want to do when you're dry camping. So now I want to talk about 11 things you're going to want to have when you're dry camping. You're going to want to have a cute, adorable puppy. Just because, why not? We have two of them and they make us happy no matter where we are, but especially dry camping. The next thing you're gonna want when you're dry camping is solar power. You do not have to have solar power. There are ways around it, especially if you're not gonna be dry camping for longer than a day, maybe two days. Uh, you can live off of your auxiliary battery, maybe a spare battery, even you running your vehicle to use the alternator to recharge your batteries. But solar makes it so much easier because most of the time you're camping, where you're gonna have enough sun to constantly replenish your batteries. We love our solar system. We love the energy products that we use, um, but they're not mandatory. It's definitely something that you wanna consider if you plan on doing a lot of dry camping and a lot of boondocking. Leading into the next thing that you're gonna want is a generator. Some RVs, your RV may have a built-in generator. All you have to do is press a button and fire it up. Others, you may want to take a generator and have it with you. You can have gas powered generators. You may have a uh, propane generator. Right now, we're actually camping in the forest, so we get very little sun. So our solar power is not as efficient as it would be if we were out in the desert somewhere or along the beach. So having a generator is great because we can fire it up and we can recharge our batteries. We can run all the things that we need to run, all the batteries we need to recharge and we don't have to worry about running out of power. Along with both your solar and your generator, of course, you're gonna to wanna to have an inverter, especially if you have things that you need to run off of AC electrical appliances. So in our case, we're constantly taking pictures, we're constantly taking video, we're using batteries, we're also working a lot of the time, so we need to recharge our electronic devices. 
So you want to have an inverter to be able to run all those devices if you're doing more than just sitting in a chair enjoying the scenery that's around you. Another optional thing that's great with dry camping and boondocking is having a cell booster. We have a WeBoost cell booster and it literally gives us an extra two bars of solar uh, cell service most places that we go, which means we're able to stay connected even if you want to get off grid, which is a lot of the reason why you want to go dry camping or boondocking. If you want to get off grid, it's still safe to make sure that you have solar cellular service because if something happens, if you get stuck, if you're broken down, of course, the farther away you go from people when you need help, it's great to be able to have that cell service to reconnect. So that is an optional thing to have, but it's definitely something that we have that we use and we use it on a regular basis. On the water side of things, you're gonna to wanna to have jerry cans that you can fill up with water. We have a really cool system of keeping fresh water where we have our holding tank. Then we have two five gallon containers of fresh water that we keep inside our camper to drink. And then we also keep at least one five to seven gallon container outside that we use for washing our dishes, for filling up our solar shower, for just doing miscellaneous things for dog water and so forth. Having jerry cans is great because it's a, you're, you're able to keep more water, which means you're able to stay out longer wherever you are. You may also want to invest in a solar shower. They can be simple as a gallon container. If you paint it black or you have a dark colored one and you leave it in the sun, it'll actually warm up during the day so you can have a warm shower. Or you can buy any number of solar showers. Of course, that's only if you plan on showering, but a lot of the times when we're dry camping and boondocking, we're gonna be off in places where we're gonna go hiking and exploring, and it's nice to be able to rinse down. Another thing for conserving water is having that collapsible bin, or just a simply a plastic bin that fits in your sink, so you can use your sink to wash the dishes, but you're collecting the water in your bin. Or you can wash your dishes outside. Using the collapsible bin, of course, is important because you're able to save the space by having it collapse down when you're not using it, and then when you get to where you're gonna be dry camping, you open it back up. For convenience, again, not necessary, you can have body wipes. These are becoming more and more popular where you just wipe yourself down with these little uh, wipes so you feel fresh and clean. I don't like them, um, but we do carry a pack just in the event that we're out for a long period of time. Another optional item for convenience, but something that we use constantly is a headlamp. As soon as night comes and it gets dark, we'll often switch to our headlamps when we're boondocking or, or dry camping to save our energy. Uh, and then of course, as we're out and about, there are no lights when you're not in a campground, you're not in a city or a town. You may be in a place like we are now where there's absolutely no light at night. It's pitch black and it's great to have a headlamp or a small flashlight. Final thing that you may wanna have are the little USB fans that you can charge uh, using a USB charger and then they'll run for usually four or five hours on a low to moderate setting. And they're very inexpensive simple to keep around, they're small, they don't take up space, but they pack a punch when it comes to actually keeping cool. So you can pick your spot inside, outside, wherever you would normally be, and you can run these USB fans instead of running your overhead vent in your, uh, in your RV. Of course, something that you should consider with your RV from day one is installing LED lights. These use very minimal energy, so a fraction of what the incandescent lights use. So installing LED lights in as many of your appliances as possible will allow you to actually use those light appliances or light fixtures without worrying about drawing too much energy. We also have a battery monitor and our MPPT solar controller will tell us the state of charge of our batteries. This is great for us from a peace of mind standpoint. We don't worry about destroying our batteries by running them down too low. We're constantly keeping track just by simply glancing at our, our solar controller or by glancing at our battery monitor, we can see how many amps are coming in, how many amps are going out, and the total uh, voltage state of charge for our batteries. So we know that we need to cut off power, for instance, or we need to turn on the generator if we can't use solar, if it's not recharging, or we just need to power down any devices that we may be charging or we may be using at the time. So that's another great thing to have when you're dry camping. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully these 20 tips and tricks for dry camping have helped you have a better experience, whether you're going out for the first time or whether you're just honing in on your skills of, of boondocking. Hopefully you've learned something that will help you the next time you go out dry camping. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to like it. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. We live full time in our truck camper traveling all across North America, and we love to continue to share information that inspires 
and informs you on how to live life on the road. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Leave us a comment or send us an email if you have any questions or if you want to add anything to this discussion that we may have left off for simple tips and tricks on how to dry camp and boondock. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.